Okay, here I am in a Berber carpet repair where a dog ate up the carpet. Can you believe that? Look at that. So we're going to fix that. Also needs to have a transition installed. So I've already cut a piece of tack strip. I'm going to bang in the tack strip while the island goes and cuts a piece of carpet mm -hmm. to do a patch. Then I'm going to trim the padding back with a good sharp knife. And that's what that should look like, just like that. Next thing I'm going to do is get out of the way and let Alan take over from here because he's so good at putting in a patch. <laughs> okay, the carpet that we're using here to do the patch with came out of the closet. The carpet's running the wrong direction that we want to use for the patch. So what we have to do is we're uh, patching two pieces together in order to make one, one patch. And that's what Alan's working on right now. Okay, now Alan's using the iron to seam the two pieces together, and if he does this right, it should be a completely invisible seam. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. How's, how do you like that? Is that beautiful? Well, Alan's lined up at where he wants to cut, and, and and these cross cuts on Berber carpet never look just right. Mm -hmm. When you uh, cut with the grain, it, it always looks better than cutting across the grain. Mm -hmm. But we have no choice in this case. So we informed the customer that, that she would see it a little bit. So the expectations are, are in line with reality. Cutting a Berber carpet is different than cutting another carpet because you really need to cut it all the way through those loops. And if you don't get it through the first time with that knife, you have to go back with the scissors cut those loops. Ellen's going to put the uh, seam tape underneath the carpet and what I did first before I started this video recording is I plugged in the iron so that uh, it's, it's hot and ready to roll when we are. So this is how we get the seam tape underneath the carpet. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better what it looks like to seam a, a carpet. Ellen's focusing on getting the backing just perfect. When there's no gaps and no overlaps in the backing, the top or the map of the carpet will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. That's the tractor that mm -hmm. he's using to push the glue into the backing of the carpet. When this seam dries, it will be strong enough that I can give the customer a lifetime labor guarantee that this seam will never come apart for the duration of the carpet. Well done. OK. 
Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this transition off. We call this a transition because it's a transition between the carpet and the floor. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my, my good sharp knife, and the first thing I always want to do is I just want to change a blade. It takes about a, just a couple seconds to change a blade. If you have a good sharp blade, it's going to be a lot safer because it's not going to be a lot of uh, tugging and pulling on it. And I'm going to get a good, a good clean cut the first time through. And I use the edge of the wood itself as a guide. And here's, here's the wood here. And I took, if I remove this out of the way, you can see that the, the knife is against the wood. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pull the knife along the wood, and that's going to be my edge. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going to cut this carpet exactly right the first try without any mistakes. I do make a mistake and cut it a little too short, I can stretch it a little bit, but we don't want that to happen. Okay, that is a perfect cut. Absolutely. Because I used the edge as my guide. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my carpet kicker, knee kicker. And a stair tool. Stair tool is a lot like a chisel. I'm just going to pull the carpet tight and tuck it down in between that tack strip and the wood, just like that. transition right here doesn't look like it's put down tight enough. It's no. not what I'm here for, but to me it looks like it could have been... Oh, I see you didn't do this yet. No. <clears throat> looks like this could have been put down more securely. And I'm just going to work my way straight across, get that all tucked in. Now, the carpet is a little on the thin side and the tack strip is underneath there with those sharp nails poking up and when little uh, Miss Princess and her bare feet walk over it, she's going to feel those sharp nails. So oh, no. what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tested, I could push my fingers against it and I could feel that there's no nails poking through the carpet. Mm -hmm. Last thing I want to do very quickly, just to be on the safe side, and it's totally unnecessary, but I like to be on the safe side, I'm going to use my dual fast carpet stapler here, which is a, gives, uses different types of staples. These are very, very narrow. The head of the, of the staple is very narrow. And I'm going to take the, this and I'm going to go ahead and get the staples right between the nap so you can't see the staple. And every couple of inches or so, I'll throw in a couple of a few staples. And that's why I can promise that this carpet will never come out. I can give my lifetime labor guarantee without any questions as to whether or not I might have to come back because this carpet's coming out. It wouldn't have come out anyhow because it's tapped down very nice, but if the customer comes up behind me and says, let's just see how well he's done, and starts pulling on the carpet to see if it's really tacked down well, well, you know what? If she pulls on it, it's not going to come up. That would be my husband. <laughs> <laughs> not me. This is a real life setting here for the customer driving in the background and having a good time with us. Yes, exactly. Now, I put the staples in the right place so you can't really see that they're even put in there. If I had if I had stapled it down on top of the nap, it would have left dense. Mm. So that's how I do a transition. Yay! All right.